Hello, hello, it's Carrie here. Now I'm not quite sure if it's two o'clock. I think I may be a tad early. Ah, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, your body and its interaction through your whole system and how it shows you its kind of needs, messages, intentions, and it acts like it's kind of a barometer, um, particularly a barometer of your creativity. So we're going to talk about creativity today. Uh, yeah, so the body as a creativity barometer, it's kind of like a, it's kind of a weird concept, I guess. Um, my background is as a myofascial therapist. So I spend a lot of time looking at the restrictions within the body, where it glitches, where it sticks. Quite often those glitches and sticks are the result of life. Accidents, traumas, ripping and tearing through sport, general accidents, general posture as well. I feel that a lot of the way that our bodies respond and shape themselves are um, as we need them to respond to our everyday life. They're very functional restrictions that we gain. So uh, yeah, the fascia is an incredible thing. It, it really does form like a full web through the body. And when I'm talking about fascia, I'm talking about the connective tissue. I'm talking about the covering of all the muscles, over the bones, through the muscles, all those like sliding, gliding fibers that should be moving smoothly through the body. Uh, and when it sticks and when it glitches, then you kind of get all stuck down. And um, one of the really beautiful descriptions of the fascia is that it is the page on which your life is written. Um, which is a beautiful quote. I think I taught that one through a lady called Carol M. Davis. And that takes our understanding of the fascia a stage deeper. So the fascia is not only responsive to our posture and our function, but it's also responsive to the experiences we've had through our lives, the way that we have or haven't processed trauma and emotion. And all of that gets held on a very cellular level. So what I find when I'm working with my clients um, on in treatment sessions on the couch is that quite often they'll get like snippets of recollection or emotion will spring forward and it's all because it's been bound down in the tissues until the brain felt safe enough to be able to release release and let go of all those things that no longer serve it and uh, it's fascinating stuff and what I over the decade and a part nearly 12 years I think it is <laughs> Over the, the considerable amount of time that I've spent reading about the fascia and working with the fascia, I've come to understand just how intertwined the fascia is with our, our life experience. And I feel that when we get stuck in a life sense, you know, we don't know what decisions to make, we don't know how to move forward, um, quite often there can be a connection into how our bodies are feeling. So this is where this idea of a creativity barometer comes from. I think that creativity is, for many of us, it's like that, that part of us which almost magnifies who we are, our ability to make, our ability to do, our ability to put hands on a thing and transmute that thing into something wonderful. So like healers are incredibly creative people. Therapists who put their hands on can be incredibly creative people, people who write, artists, sculptors, gardeners, all of those people who are like coming from the brain, through the heart and out through the hands. And it's an incredible experience. And I think that we all go through kind of periods where we feel incredibly creative and it's like all of our juices are like running and we feel alive and we feel vibrant and quite often at the same time our bodies feel really good 
And then there's that period where we feel sort of stale and dry and I kind of like liken it to like being a moth dries up at the back of the cupboard, you know, it's like that, that real kind of feeling of desiccation and you're just like, <sighs> the muse has flown. You know, you get that sense of you couldn't create even if you wanted to and you feel that heaviness within your body at the same time. So we're going to play a little bit today with how our body feels and we're going to be talking more as we go through this little workshop about the feeling piece and how that feeling piece is so important with the creativity piece and with the body piece. We're going to see if we can find links and bring all of this in together. So just for a moment, I want you to think about the day you've had so far. I want you to think about the day you have ahead of you. I want to think, you to get, be thinking about all the good things that are coming up and all the niggles that are coming up. The bills you've got to pay, those emails you've got to write, that really cool meeting with somebody later, the fun you're going to have this evening because you're seeing this person or that person. What I want you to do is just kind of run through your schedule of today the day you've had so far and the day you've got ahead of yourself and get a sense for how that feels. Yeah? Alrighty. Now I'm not very good with comments but obviously if you want to comment just write down in the comment section you know if you want to tell me how you feel about that state of how you are today then just feel free to write that in the comments. Okay, now you've got that sense of feeling. What I want you to do, uh, do is to stand up. And when you're on your feet, I want you to have a little move around. Lift your arms up. See how you rotate from the waist. Oh, see if you can get your hands all the way down to the floor. What do your shoulders feel like? Hmm? When you roll your shoulders, how do they feel? Oh, what about your jaw and your neck? Clunky, grunchy, smooth. Can you get your ear to your shoulder? Not today. <laughs> okay. How do your knees, knees feel? How do your ankles feel? Just let your body have a roll around. <sighs> Can you get your breath to drop in? Or do you feel as though you're quite up here? Tell me, tell me, where do you feel that tightness? Can you feel anywhere sticking? Can you feel any kind of leftness within your body? Mm -hmm. Just let yourself kind of really go into your body and get a feeling for it. Now hopefully you are all managing to feel. Now I, I totally get that some people feel, oh shoulders are tight, huh Claire? Mm. Yeah. Now some of us really struggle to get into our bodies. Some of us find it's kind of like there's a disconnect around here between the thinking part and the feeling part of our body. And so it's a really nice practice to kind of have a wiggle around. Not only because we sit so much that we really need to get our metabolism pumping again by getting up on our feet and moving. Left knee niggle kicking in. Oh yeah. We know that one, George. We know that left knee, Nicole. <laughs> Shoulders and neck. Hi, Jude. Cool. Okay, so we've got lots of shoulder and necky stuff going on. I think for me, mm. rotation. Not bad. Could be a little bit slidier. Alrighty, so we're going to start to play with this idea of your body as barometer. I love this little game. So what I'd like to do, get you to do whilst you're still stood, if you are still stood, and if you're not, and if you can't, then do this on the replay. When you get you stood up, bring your feet about hip width apart. So you don't want too wide a stance, but you want to feel quite balanced. Low back stiffness. Rotation's always worse on the left side. I like it. Now you're all starting to get into it. Okay, cool. So. Keep those thoughts stored on a shelf somewhere because you're going to be coming back to them, all right? But what I want you to do is stand up, feet hip width apart, and you're going to bring one arm out in front of you. Actually, yeah, let's do it this way. One arm out in front of you. So 
you're going to rotate. I want you to see if you can keep your hips still, so it's just the top of your body rotating over your legs, okay? And you're going to see how far around you can stretch. Oh, oh, I can literally feel my back go. <laughs> Come back to the middle. All right, so that was one side. I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm probably reversed, so I'm not even going to say left side or right side. Okay, and then we're going to come up with the other one, and you're going to come around in the other direction. Remember, you're just moving top half of your body. Keep your hips forward facing if you can, okay? So we're going this way. Hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but I can feel that there is a considerable difference, and I bet George can too, because she's talking about rotation. Feel a considerable difference between the way you're going in one direction and the way you're going in the other direction. All right, so we're going to bring a, a life element in now. So if you will, what I would like you to do is bring up a memory in your mind. Okay. You're going to pick one of the worst days, <laughs> like a log. Oh, Mari, we can work on that. Don't worry, honey bunny. <laughs> okay, so for this piece, what I want you to do is I want you to pick one of the worst days in your life, okay? I'm going to ask you to go into the feeling of that. I want you to kind of get into the... <laughs> yeah, so flood yourself with the detail of that experience, why it felt so heavy, why it felt so dark, why it made you feel so sad. I want you to kind of really allow yourself to feel that feeling that you had then, all right? So just take a moment, I'm going to do it too. Who we got there? Hey, Cherie. Okay, so we're just doing a, a little bit of rotation work. We're talking about how your body and your life and your emotional aspects are all tied in together. So what we're going to do is we're just focusing on bringing in a negative emotion and get that feeling in our hearts and our chests all the way down through to our toes from the top of our hip through to our toes get that negativity <sighs> right there okay i'm just going to find mine all right i'm going to do the same exercise again okay arm up so you're going to rotate in one direction and then you're going to go the other way but hold that emotion okay let's see how far we go so Hmm. Bring it back. Are you still with me? Still in that emotion? That look. Going the other way. Whoa. Whoa. How'd it feel? You can drop all that emotion now, by the way. Shake it off. Give yourself a good old shake. You're going to get rid of all of that negative stuff that we've just been conjuring up in our cells, okay? So give it a good old shake. Kick your feet. And tell me, how did that feel? Or maybe you're all just still processing that. Hmm. Okay, I know for myself that it all just felt a lot more stuck. I didn't rotate as far in either direction. I was quite surprised. I thought I'd still go quite well on that way, but ugh. all right. So now we've shaken off all that energy, what we're going to do is we are going to even tighter. Yeah, I know, dude. Hey. <laughs> yes, George, exactly that sentiment. Yeah, totally. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, tighter. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Are you, good? are you ready for the good stuff now? All right. So we've done the negative. But what I want you to bring into mind now is like the coolest, the most amazing, most spectacular day you've had can turn one way or two yeah 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 totally know that feeling Murray. yeah yeah it's like your body's just gone <clears throat> locked bring into mind the most spectacular the most amazing the most fan freaking amazing day you've ever had i want you to fill yourself up from the toes with all the joy with all the bliss with all the excitement all of that good stuff that you felt then, I want you to really get yourself tingly. I mean, I'm already there and I can feel my back up and down. It's just like, ah, and I feel my legs all tingling and I can really feel that, like the energy of that amazingness going through me. So, okay, you got the amazingness. I hope you've all got the amazingness. Oh yeah, okay, so we're feeling really, really like energized now with all that good feeling. I want you to bring your arm up. 
we're going to rotate again. See how far you go. <laughs> come right to the middle. You ready? You go the other way. All right. Oh, you're in the happy place, you're in your happy place. Oh yeah. Ah! Back to the middle. How are you doing? How did you find that? Oh my God, that felt so much better. I think I increased my range by like from there to there. That, yeah. That, that's more than 90 degrees. That's a considerable increase in like movement of my body. So how did you go on? <laughs> and you're just pissing yourself with laughter, are you, George? Yeah, 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 isn't it, Claire? That is pretty amazing. Okay, so this is really cool because what you're starting to experience is how your feelings affect what's going on in there. You're like an owl. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> when you just keep going. 90 degree improvement, better than when I started. Great. How are you doing? Yes, better, better. What a difference. Absolutely. And that is just allowing yourself to be in this place of high vibration, good thought, happy feeling, bliss, bliss, bliss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was definitely out like, I'm going to watch that on the replay again because it's like, what? <laughs> so there's that bliss state where everything feels really great. And then there's that low, sludgy, oof, energy. Now, when you think of yourself as being a creative being, if you think of yourself as being somebody who really wants to experience all the good shit that's going on in their world, in their lives, in like the, you know, I mean, we can't affect the news, but well, I mean, we can kind of affect the news, but when you want to feel as though you're really, truly absorbing all of that awesomeness, part of the secret is about allowing yourself to be in that place to accept the good stuff. You know, it's like, all of us have, as we, you know, we all have knocks, we all have pains, we all have niggles. But how we feel about those knocks, and those pains and those niggles affects how it responds and how it acts on our body. So this is kind of what I mean about being a barometer. So when you're feeling good, your range of movement is great. We could do this stood on one leg. Bring your knee up as high as you can, and if you think about really, really positive things, you're going to stand on one foot so much more <laughs> effectively. I'm surprised actually how stable I am. Then, if you think about the sludge, right? Okay, I'm going to try this. So, that first one I was thinking about all the good stuff, <sighs> right? I have to go looking for the dark place again. And what's really interesting is you can probably see it and I'm totally not putting this on. I'm far too much of a straight talking empath for that shit. But actually when I go into that dark place, I feel my posture change. Yeah. So <laughs> if I go up on one leg, I'm pretty... St <coughs> I want to say I'm pretty stable, but actually I'm kind of wobbly. And that's just conjuring up an emotion. That's just holding a feeling within your body. So if you are looking to create good stuff, if you are looking to, to write or to make or to sew or to garden or to cook, doesn't it make sense that how we feel in our body is also affecting how we feel when we do any of those creative activities. We are so linked through our fascia. So where we have pain, where we have discomfort, where we have restriction and torsioning. I mean, I don't know. It's possible that the pattern on this dress is gonna be my friend today and it's gonna help me. Okay, so imagine, imagine if you will, I don't know whether you can see it, have the tippy toe. Imagine if you will that there is a restriction around my hip that I've had my appendix removed and actually the surgery caused quite a lot of scar tissue. Let's go with that, just as an example, I've seen it many times before in my clinic. Okay, so scar tissue forms like a funnel within your body. And what it does is it puckers and it drags the tissue. So it pulls you down, pulls you all the way down. I mean, you can see just from my top that when I pucker my top, it pulls all this tissue down to where it's puckering. Now, Imagine the whole web of your body 
it's doing the same. It's coming into the restriction. It's trying to give you enough wiggle room that you can keep moving, but at the same time, it's trying to protect. So there's loads of cool ways that we can use our bodies. We can use fascia work at home, which allows us to weave it together with intention and positive thought and being just aware of how we are thinking. And it brings it all that good stuff together. And then we can free up our systems. We can create amazing neural pathways which allow us to just create beautiful, beautiful things. The thing with fascia work and the thing with your body is that it's desperately trying to be hydrated. It really wants to suck up all that liquid, which is gonna give it its slide and its glide. And where there is restriction, and where the tissue is tied down, then the tissue becomes dry, and the, the membranes of each cell become such that they just don't, they, they forget how to be a sponge. So you end up with this stickiness and this tackiness through your body. Now I've been working um, with my friend Debbie, I've, I've been trialing a lot of this stuff. I've got a, a, a program that I'm gonna tell you about at the end, but that, don't worry about that. Okay, so I've been trialing this stuff for a little while and I've been working with an editor writer friend of mine. And we use some really simple techniques like that barometer technique and some jaw stuff and some opening up of the chest stuff. And after a couple of weeks she was like, holy shit, it's like she can't stop creating. It's like this plug had been pulled out and then all of this like a gushing geyser of creativity that just more and more amazing work was pouring out of her. And she was like saying, I'm almost struggling to keep up with the amount of good stuff that's being created that she could just feel like all of this was just like, wow, bubbling up and bubbling up. And it's just that, that amazing idea of, and it's, there's a, a, a therapist, a, a cool lady therapist. She started out in like the 1920s. Her name is Ida Rolf. And Ida Rolf was uh, from New York and she was about as New York as you got. And she had this saying of where you think it is, it ain't. And this idea is so true for creativity. It's so true for the things that we want to bring into our lives. When we're tight and restricted to our body, it's going to affect how we're feeling in our mind. And when our thinking and our beliefs are tired and tight and restricted, it's going to affect how we feel in our body. So by working both sides of this, by working both ends of this, we can really start to get some freedom again. And I just think that's such an amazing thought that we can like free ourselves up to be able to just live so much better versions of our lives. It's like that, what's the word, entelechy. So this idea of entelechy, that everything, everything you need is inside of you and that the potential can be released, it's like, you plant the acorn and the oak tree grows, that there is the entelechy of the acorn, that within the acorn there is this massive oak tree waiting to get out. And I think it's kind of the same with humans. When, we, when we're like heart-led people who don't go uh, rational and logical, we have to be really aware of the feelings that we're feeling. And I like to think that it has to be limbic over logic. So our developed human brain like the neocortex is all to do with logic, it's all to do with um, rationality. But our nervous system is very much controlled by the limbic portion of our brain, which is the brainstem, which is the bit that we've had since we were little old reptiles or, you know, apes or, you know, <laughs> whichever point back in time that the brain developed, it developed a limbic system first. So the limbic system is only interest in the feel of a thing. So basically it's a protection system. It's like, there's a saber tooth tiger, it's coming towards me, what the hell am I gonna do? Well, I'm either gonna run or I'm gonna fight it or I'm gonna freeze and play dead. And that's my options. And so we, we create the running, the fighting, the freezing, and then we get on with our lives because we got rid of the, the saber tooth tiger. But in modern life, there are no saber tooth tigers. In modern life, there's emails pretending to be saber-toothed tigers. There's deadlines pretending to be saber-toothed tigers. There's taxes and taxes and job interviews and all of that stuff is just pretending to be a saber-toothed tiger. And nobody told our brain that. So our brain is still like 
ah, there's a saber-toothed tiger and it won't go away and it's chasing me down the street. And if this saber-toothed tiger doesn't get a 5,000 word email or essay by the end of the week, it's gonna sack me. She's really dumb for a saber-toothed tiger. So no matter how much logic we use, we end up with these belief systems that get stuck in this because we've forgotten that we're really feeling creatures, not thinking creatures. And so a big part of how we create amazing, gorgeous, wonderful lives of ourselves, for ourselves is about remembering that we have to be feeling creatures. It's not just human beings, it's humans' feelings. You know, it's like, how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel? What is it you want to create? In your heart, what does that do to you? I mean, it's like, for me, it's about, I want to feel curious and scintillated. I want to feel like abundance in experience. It's not even about money, because really money is like, it's just an energy anyway. But it's about that, I want to feel loved and nurtured. And when I think about my life in those ways, then it stops me from being in fear. Because fear as well is a really specific thing. We don't just fear generic saber-toothed tiger anymore, do we? You know, it's not like we were ever at a point where we were just fearing one saber-toothed tiger. His name is Bob. He lives in the third cave down the mountain range and he's a badass. We weren't bothered about Bob. We were just bothered about Bob's cousins and Bob's uncles and Bob's mother <laughs> and all the other Bobs bobbing around. It wasn't just one saber-toothed tiger. And I think that when we have fear now, we tend to get really specific, don't we? We tend to be like, I haven't got enough money to pay the mortgage. I'm really unhappy with this human being. And you're like, how can we change that? How can we allow ourselves to move back from here, which is where fear is going to put us, into here, which is where being in our creative abundant flow is going to allow us to be. And I just think that allowing ourselves the gift of generality as well, when we get so overwhelmed about the one fearful thing, that instead of going, I have a tax bill, I have to raise £12,000 by the end of the month, end of January. If I don't raise that £12,000, I'm screwed. You've got to allow yourself to become broader because this again is where you get creative. This is where the ideas spring up, where this is like where you kind of get all that juicy, good feeling. And I think that when we learn how to, tax bills aside, because 12,000, you know, it's, it would be no joke. But what I'm trying to get, into, get you to think about is this idea that when we start to work with our bodies, when we start to understand that our feeling, what we wish to bring to ourselves, is very deeply connected with how we physically feel. I mean, there's all the work of Louise L. Hay, um, who talks about how various different aspects of illness are so closely linked with how we feel about you know, relatives and annoyances and tolerations. There's so much work around the somatization of trauma, of post-traumatic stress disorder, of childhood experiences, all of this huge breadth of work, which all filters down into the stuff that you think about, the beliefs that you hold, are also going to be very closely, cleverly linked with how we physically show up and how we physically experience ourselves and that when we allow ourselves to acknowledge and respect both the feeling and the feeling, so the physical and the emotional, the physical and the mental, the spiritual and the physical, when we allow all of these things to come together and we work very much on a holistic approach that we're thinking about the things but we're working physically on the things then we end up in this really amazing, cool place. And it's like, yeah, it's just magic. It's absolutely magic. So what I'd like you to kind of take away from all of this is this sense that your body has an innate wisdom and when you're not sure about your decisions when you're not sure how to create 
What I'd like you to do is allow your body to show you its tightness. So if we go back to those heavy feelings that we were thinking, some of you will have felt it in your neck and in your shoulders. And then it's about how do we get hands on? How can we use that fascial work, particularly with stuff around the throat, which is also so connected with how we want to verbalize our desires, how we wish to be seen, how we want to be visible, and that vulnerability of visibility, that when we can actually get hands onto the skin, and I'm gonna show you a really quick one, just allowing one hand to gently anchor, and the top hand, so imagine this pressure as well, it's like squeezing a raspberry. You don't want to squish it, you just want to pluck it. So it's that very gentle pressure. And without squeezing your neck, the delicate thing that it is, but treating it respectfully and acknowledging it, acknowledging all the experience of your tissues. <sighs> Allowing that top hand just to slide up towards your jaw. Stopping wherever it asks you to stop. And it will ask you to stop. So you can spend more time there. And you feel that the breath drops in. The room calms down around you. You might even start to notice that your digestion kicks in, you start to gurgle, and all of this is that your limbic system is telling your nervous system that you're safe. And it just releases all of that whoo, back into the ground. Now, as I mentioned before, I've been playing with all of this stuff for quite a lot. Now, if it speaks to you, um, I'm going to drop in a link in a little bit so you can go and have a look at um, details of a little thing I'm going to run and um, it's a trial thing that I'm going to run. Uh, it's five classes between next Thursday and Christmas. It's called Creative Soul Farm and it is all about what we've been talking around today. It's about how to get the feeling and the belief and the intention into the tissue of your body, how to soften the tissue, how to work on that tissue safely and carefully and respecting everything that's going on within your body. So it's about not only softening restriction, but it's also about igniting muscle patterns again. It's about getting you back into that place where you feel alive and lithe and fresh and then allowing your belief and your best way to describe it. That kind of, I just want to say that very mindy way that you are to become more nurtured again. And the really cool thing about this, and I've been teaching these um, techniques to clients for years and years and years, is that um, they're super simple. And once you know these techniques, you know them for life. And it's so cool when you've got these techniques too. So I do a lot of work around the jaw, a lot of work around the head. You'd be amazed at how easily you can soften all of this. And it's just like, ah, just drops into your body. And I'm really excited to share it with you because it's like, I'm in my happy, crazy, good place. It's like, if we could all just remember how awesome this shell is, this thing that we're living in is so freaking amazing. And we get to... I mean, I'm 41, and I'm starting to hear quite a lot of people say, it's age though, isn't it, it's age. And yes, you know, we don't, maybe we don't rejuvenate quite as quickly as we sh could, did when we were younger, let's put it that way. But I think that there is a belief system attached to it. And I think that there is like a, you ever heard of Gaussian curve? Okay, so a Gaussian curve is a statistical thing. I hate that word, statistical. So it's a bell, it goes up, and it goes like that, and it goes like that. So it's kind of, it should be kind of, kind of bell-shaped, pretty equal. So the middle bit is where the main people, it's the majority, the mean, the median, and the mode of all the people sit in the top of the bell. So they are the ones who have 
the same expectations. So these are the people who will be like, aging is inevitable. <laughs> aging is inevitable and it's only going to get worse. And um, as you get older, you don't think as clearly, you don't have the same spring in your step. Um, you, you know, you're not as creative. It's just a fact of life. But then at the other end of the curve, you've got the, well, I'll be, <laughs> I don't even know. I can't even put my head into what the other end of the curve would be. Well, I'll be dead by 50. I don't need to worry about that. I guess that they're in that curve. And then there's over here. And I'd like to think that we're kind of all over here because we're in the bit where we're like, oh, say, who said that was the rule? Who said that that is how aging should be? Who said that that's what happens in your middle ages? Who are these, who are these people to say that I can't be doing marathons and triathlons in my 60s, that I can't be producing my best work of my life now? For this whole 27 club, all these like amazing rock stars who popped their clogs by the age of 27 and that was their whole legacy. Da -da. Who's to say that all that potential isn't still stored within your body? That that is your entelechy, that it is there within you and that it can be released now and that we can use body work and mind work and laughter and love and ridiculousness and caring and nurturing and tribe and community and all of these things and create really special stuff and that's what <laughs> I feel like I've just gone on a I have a dream <laughs> speech <laughs> But that's what I want for you. And that is absolutely what is behind Creative Soul Farm. And it like, it feels so good. And it's, I really do believe that, you know, that, that we are amazing human beings and that there is so much for us to play with in this world. So takeaways for today. Your body is an incredible barometer of how you are feeling that you are an interconnected, incredible web of tissue and muscle and sinew and mind and belief and happiness and sadness and emotion and that full gamut of everything. Hell yeah, Mary, I have seen you in action. I can't wait to see what else you create to write, my love. You are just getting started. It's just like, we are like little pop pocket rockets of amazingness and we've got it all to give and that's like the coolest thing so yeah I want you to really connect in with how your body feels I mean I know I do I do a lot of wiggling around I do a lot of wiggling around and you know what I am not ashamed of wiggling around because it keeps me connected with like where am I tight okay so I'm tight in the top of my left butt cheek so how can I send feelings of pleasure there? What does my body need? Where does that connect into? I go, okay, so actually that left, see, and this is, this is how I kind of do my work. That left hip thing is actually spreading up to just kind of under my ribs. So I know that as I work into that, that is, I'm totally left on go. It's a vulnerability, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm putting myself out here saying, hey, I'd love to work with you guys. Oh, and I so don't want to sell. I'm so not selling. But it's, this is how we feel into our bodies. And I can, I know I can show you how you can feel this for yourselves. I know I can show you how you can feel into your bodies. And then you can release so much incredible good stuff. And that would be loads of fun. So. If you would like to come and play with me, uh, Creative Soul Farm starts next Thursday. We're going to be doing five live classes through Facebook. Um, there will be three Q and A's between now and Christmas. I'm going to give you journaling prompts. I am going to be getting you thinking about your beliefs. I'm going to be giving you exercises and techniques that you can use through your whole incredible body. Um, yeah, and it's going to be loads of fun. 
yeah so if you would like to if you'd like to sign up i would love to see you there um, you're going to find all the details on the link I'm going to drop in after this live but if you are going to go look you'll find it on the menu at wearetreatmentunicorns.com awesome thank you so much guys for turning up thank you for watching this on the replay and if you are watching this on the replay say hi so I know that you're there that would be awesome so much love to you all my loves have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time take care now bye Mm-hmm. <laughs>